Hello our most developed student, my name is Confident, welcome to our revision session and today we are looking at Mathematics N1 and it is a quick lesson for you, I just wanted to bring um, a, a subject on solving for x, so I just took a question from one of the previous papers and this is the question uh, that I wanted to share with to share with you and this question says you need to solve for x and you are given this particular problem so i just want to show you some of the things that you can avoid so that your answer is always correct when it comes to solving for x so let us look at this question so you are given um just to make it big so this is what you are given and i must solve for x in this particular question so now first thing the first things first you need to be careful of this particular negative sign and this particular negative sign is affecting everything inside the bracket just like 4 is affecting everything inside the bracket. Now this particular negative sign is not affecting the minus 5. As you can see, minus 5 is outside the bracket. So let us start by opening that bracket. And when you open the bracket, what you need to do is this whole minus 4 is multiplying x. And that minus 4 is multiplying minus 3. So when you do that, you're going to say minus 4 times x. And you have again minus 4 times minus 3. That is a, a way of writing it. Or you can write it and say minus 4 bracket x, meaning times x, and minus 4 bracket minus 3. You can represent like that and then you have got minus 5 as we said minus 5 is not affected by the minus 4 this is equal to again if you notice the 3 is affecting x and the 3 is affecting minus 7 that's why you have that particular bracket so what you do is you you that is called distributing 3 that is 3 times x and it is 3 times minus 7. So this will be equal to 3 times x. And then now the sign for 3 is positive. So you're going to say plus 3. That's the sign I'm taking. In the first one, the sign was negative and I had minus in that case. So be careful now of the signs that you're going to choose. So it is going to be plus 3 multiplied by negative 7. Just be careful of the negative sign in that case. Then when you simplify, minus 4 times x is minus 4x. Then minus 4 times minus 3, it is a positive 12, but always test that with the calculator. Minus 4 times minus 3, it is a 12. So always test such with the calculator, especially when you're dealing with a negative sign. And then after that, you have minus 5, this is equal to 3 times x, it is 3x, and 3 times minus 7, it is negative 21. Again, as I said, such with a negative, you need to test it. 3 times negative 7 is that. You lose nothing by testing your answer. Sometimes you find a student write 3 times negative 7 is positive 21. Now, your answer is going to be wrong just because of the sign. So, always test your answers with the calculator. Now, what we need to do at this stage um, here, we need to collect like terms. That's what we're going to do now. We need to collect like terms, meaning you're going to take everything that is x to one side. For example, I have got 3x on the other side of the equal sign. Remember, the key is the equal sign. So I've got 3x on the other side of the equal sign that is on the right hand side so this 3x will jump the equal sign to join the 4x with actually the minus 4x on the other side at the same time while it is joining minus 4x we we have also another uh, other parts which is plus 12 and minus 5 these are just numbers they will also jump the equal sign so that they can join um, minus 21 so if I can use the same markers the yellow for the other one and um, 
and the white for the uh, for the numbers so what i have here is minus 4x and it is joined by 3x now whenever a number or anything jumps the equal sign it changes the sign so the 3x was positive so when it jumps it will become minus 3x so remember whenever there is a jumping of an equal sign the sign must also change so that's why we have minus 4x minus 3x is equal to now look at 12 12 was positive when it jumps to join minus 21 because minus 21 didn't move the sign doesn't change so the 12 is the one that is joining minus 21 so it changes from positive to negative 12 and the the 5 was negative it will also change to positive 5 so that is what is happening you're just interchanging the signs now you have to add minus 4x plus minus 3 and if you do that use your calculator as i said especially when you deal with the negative so it's minus 4 minus 3 the calculator will tell you that it's negative 7 so you have got minus 7x there you just maintain the x is equal to then on the number side when you add uh, minus 21 minus 12 plus 5 and then it will give you negative 28 so you have got minus 28 so now you need to further simplify that. So how do you simplify this at the end of the day? You see, minus 7 is multiplying the x. So there is a multiplication sign. So it's more like you're saying minus 7 times x. So I can write it and say this is minus 7 times x. Remember, minus 7 times x is minus 7x is equal to negative 28. So now, how do you get rid of this particular minus 7 what you need to remind yourself is you need to do the opposite of multiplication to get rid of the negative 7 so what is the opposite of multiplication it is division so the only way you can separate the 7 from the x is by dividing don't be tempted to say i'm going to take the 7 so that it jumps the equal sign so that it will become negative 7 i mean negative 28 plus 7 that will be wrong you don't do that why because the 7 is tied by the multiplication sign so it's like it is glued together it is tied together and the only way you can separate the 7 i mean the minus 7 from the x is by dividing so you say all over and you divide by negative 7 and then what you do on the left you must also do on the right and then you say all over and you divide by negative 7 that is the way you separate a multi i mean a number that is multiplying from another part so when you do that you can divide now by the negative 7 and you can um if i can just uh give more space here since we have divided by negative 7 what we have is x since it is divided is equal to now you are dividing negative 28 divided by negative 7 and it will be negative 4 I mean it will be positive 4 so when you do that why because the negative divided by a negative is a positive 7 into 28 is a 4 so that's what you get as the answer is equal to positive 4 now when you have done that the most important thing to do is always to test your answer it is very important for you to test your answer so what you simply do is wherever if i can just show you what we have here wherever there was the value of x you are going to now uh input uh in this case the value that you got so wherever there is x we said x was equal to 4 so wherever there is x you put a 4 you put a 4 so what you are having now is you are having minus 4 and then 4 minus 3 minus 5 is equal to 3 and then we've got 4 minus 7 this is very very important because without testing your answer you won't know whether you're correct or wrong so use a calculator to add or multiply whatever is on the other side so as is you say minus 4 bracket 4 minus 3 close the bracket minus 5 
and then you get the answer as you can see after that is an equal sign so the answer says minus 9 so you write minus 9 on this side it is equal to do the same thing on the right hand side we have got 3 into 4 minus 7 and then you say equal to you get minus 9 so now when you've done that you can see that the left hand side is equal to the right hand side it therefore means your answer for x is equal to 4 at that moment you will know that it is correct with the equations you need to test your answer and it is the simplest way of finding out if your answer is correct or wrong so if you're in the exam and you're doubting did i get it right or wrong whenever you're solving for x you must know that i must test my answers now such a question in an exam is worth about four marks and these are good four marks for you to get um for such as i said i just wanted to bring you a question as you are doing your revision session for mathematics n1 i wish you all the best in your exams now remember to subscribe to our channel if ever you want more of these videos so that you can be um, uh, notified whenever we post a new video there is a bell that you can switch on to get real-time notifications from youtube and share this channel also with some friends and colleagues so that they can also benefit remember sharing is caring now we've come to the end of our lesson thank you